Hello there. Welcome to our program, Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel uh, here at the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. And our program is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, a joint venture of the uh, PATH presenter and the Digital Pathology Association. I'd like to talk to you today about a very interesting case that illustrates both the number of principles uh, involved generally and, uh, of course, uh, with interesting specific pathology. It comes from the realm of uh, a liver and breast pathology. Uh, the patient is an older woman who has a history of breast cancer a few years back and now has a new liver mass. So uh, with concern that this, of course, could be a metastatic disease, um, a biopsy was obtained. Um, and uh, here we have a representative cores, uh, as you can see, fairly cellular uh, tumor tissue uh, with a lot of glandular spaces and uh, epithelial lining, uh, a little bit of uh, cribriform pattern, perhaps. Um, and uh, you can see the uh, nuclear features, fairly round nuclei. A lot of things in looking at this biopsy uh, suggest the possibility that this could be uh, breast carcinoma uh, that's metastatic to the liver. There's not much in the way of necrosis, however, um, and uh, many of the nuclei are relatively lower grade uh, overall speaking. Um, so how are we going to eliminate uh, and evaluate whether or not this is metastatic disease or whether this represents something else, a new primary or heaven forbid, a metastasis from another site? Well, uh, I put together this short uh, list because what we're looking for is a truly negative predictive value uh, that's gonna say, no, this is not breast cancer. So um, while in modern pathology, a lot of us jump right away to doing uh, breast specific markers such as GATA3, relatively breast specific, or maybe GCDFP15, which is uh, maybe a little bit more breast specific, but not as sensitive, or perhaps mammoglobin, uh, if your lab has that availability, could also be used to uh, underscore uh, breast uh, uh, origin. Um, there are uh, more commonly used uh, the, the non-specific markers. In this case, CK7 is not going to help you particularly because uh, obviously, there are elements of the liver that can be CK7 positive, including uh, biliary elements. HER2, ERPR, and so forth might be useful, and so forth. And then when worse comes to worse, uh, you can do uh, molecular phenotyping, look for site of origin uh, markers, and so forth, and various panels are available commercially or otherwise for that. But I want to emphasize the value uh, of comparing the prior histologic material. There is perhaps no special stain of greater value and less frequently used than this particular marker. And I just as an aside here, as a plug for the Digital Pathology Association, uh, in one of the early studies, and I think we reported on this in the earlier uh, video um, at Memorial Sloan Kettering, they saw that the number of additional special stains that had to be evaluated when they went digital and began to art, uh, digitize their archives uh, went down very significantly. So this is a very powerful histologic tool to compare current and prior material. And when you lower the barrier by making it available on the, at the uh, click of a, of a, a mouse or button uh, to review that prior material, rather than waiting for days for the slides to be pulled from the archives across town uh, and two tunnels away, uh, you're going to get a lot more uh, easily done uh, comparisons. Well, so uh, let's do that. Rather than showing you the fancy schmancy immunohistochemistry stains, here is the prior uh, breast biopsy. And as you can see, it's a needle core biopsy. Um, we have some fatty fibrous tissue, and here is our tumor. Now, looking at this tumor, um, I think you'll see as I pull it up here into higher magnification um, that this is uh, tending towards small gland formation. It's a really uh, almost a, a grade one tumor because virtually every one of these nests has a central lumen. Uh, the nuclei are fairly uh, low grade and uh, uh, there's not much in the way of mitotic activity. 
Uh, so sometimes you can get that information from looking at the report, but not always. Now, having said that, uh, given that this is fairly low grade and it's making small uh, cystic spaces akin to what we had on the biopsy, uh, it would not be unreasonable to therefore proceed with some immunohistochemistry stains to sort of further substantiate, uh, especially since this was a, a, a tumor that was ERPR positive um, and uh, so forth. So uh, we do that on the liver. Those are negative. Um, uh, no breast markers uh, stain positively in the liver tumor. Um, and so we presume, therefore, that this is a, a new lesion and it comes to a partial hepatectomy because it's localized in a particular zone. So uh, here's the uh, resection specimen. And as you can see, at low magnification, uh, it has some areas that look very thyroid like, very follicular pattern, uh, large uh, dilated spaces with eosinophilic fluid. Other areas with uh, more um, uh, amphiphilic or uh, blue staining areas, um, and sort of a multi-nodular pattern of appearance. Um, again, these are the features that we saw on the biopsy, uh, these uh, somewhat uh, open spaces uh, surrounded by uh, nuclei with uh, um, low-grade appearance, uh, but prominent nucleoli, a few mitotic figures, uh, and so forth. So uh, what markers then could be used to verify um, uh, origin from the liver? So CK7, we've already said not, that's, that could be helpful, but it's not totally specific. Um, and we might think about other possibilities. But one marker that has been used uh, and is uh, quite helpful for identifying uh, hepatic origin, particularly in the biliary tumors, is the presence of um, uh, messenger RNA in situ hybridization for albumin uh, messenger RNA. Um, and so, in fact, that was done in this case. I won't show you the slide, uh, but it was clearly positive, indicating that this was a primary uh, tumor originating in the liver. Um, this pattern, a large sieve-like spaces, pseudo-follicular patterns, uh, has been associated with the cholangioblastic variant of cholangiocarcinoma. Now, this is an unusual variant, usually uh, seen in women, um, and it does have this nice follicular architecture with the very thin, watery, mucinous-type com components. Another uh, feature that is significant and which also helped in this situation was the presence of inhibin positivity. Additionally, some of these can be synaptophysin uh, positive as well. Uh, and other liver markers like arginase or HEPAR and so forth were negative. So this uh, fairly distinctive immunophenotype, um, uh, we uh, determined to be diagnostic of this entity. Now, uh, here's a nice example of what those uh, things look like that taken from a publication, which prepared this nice um, uh, composite slide. But here you can see what the uh, messenger RNA in situ hybridization looks like, where it's looking at the albumin uh, messenger RNA. Here's the CK7, as we'd expect, and inhibin shows variable, uh, strong and weak positivity, but definitely uh, positive. And then synaptophysin can also show some uh, intermediate uh, level positivity. So all those features quite uh, characteristic of cholangioblastic cholangiocarcinoma. And I would therefore include, encourage you when you see this sort of solid multi-cystic or thin follicular pattern uh, to consider that in your differential diagnosis on a liver uh, biopsy. Well, uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, that uh, case, our final sign-out diagnosis, cholangioblastic cholangiocarcinoma. Uh, not the most common tumor that to find in the liver, but it does illustrate the uh, value of uh, both uh, comparing prior surgical material, as well as uh, knowing the literature and uh, doing a complete panel of uh, uh, considerations to uh, rule out or establish your final diagnosis. So thanks so much for joining us. We hope that you like this program. If you did, please hit that like button. And we also welcome you to subscribe. That helps us a lot um, and ensures that you will be alerted when uh, new videos are released on our channel. Um, we try to release videos uh, fairly regularly, uh, looking towards both the uh, common 
uh, and occasionally the uh, nicely enriching uh, uh, tumors and uh, lesions that uh, you don't see every day, uh, but which are, are nice to have available to you to review. Uh, we always uh, post the links to the uh, histologic digital slides in our uh, comment section, so please look for that and review those uh, if you'd like to learn more and study at your own pace. So until next time, thanks so much for joining me.